Hello, welcome to Let Me Bore You to Sleep. My name is Jason Newland. Please only listen to this when you can safely close your eyes. And just to remind you that there is actually a Facebook page devoted to this Let Me Bore You To Sleep. So you just go to Facebook and put in Let Me Bore You To Sleep and it will come up. I post every new episode on there. So it's... uh, Unlike my Facebook, my other Facebook... I've got two other Facebook pages. Uh, One where I've got... Like a normal Facebook that makes sense and then there's a Facebook page and then there's but I post everything on that one but with the let me bore you to sleep I only post these specific recordings Um, what I thought I would do is let you know what I've got in my hand right now I've got a book called Hypnosis for Beginners Uh, Reach New Levels of Awareness and Achievement so by William W. Hewitt and it says at the top over 100,000 sold now I bought this book not this actual copy but uh the original, you know, because I've not got that anymore. I've only had, I've had this book for maybe a year or two. But I bought this book anyway in, it was January 1998. So nearly, well, 21 and a half years ago. And I bought another book. I think it was Introduction to Hypnosis and I'd been looking at them they were in a bookshop I don't remember which bookshop it was I kind of know it was I think it was Charing Cross Road excuse me um was it Charing Cross Lane and uh, the road where Foyles bookshop is but it wasn't Foyles I don't think that I bought this book it was the other side of the road and it wasn't Blackwell's was it Book Etc Waterstones I think I don't know but it was a big big bookshop and I think they I think they closed down and got replaced by another bookshop store. I think. Uh, anyway, at the time, in the last few months of 1997, I was buying quite a few self-help books and self-help audios. Like Tony Robbins, Zig Ziglar, uh, what other ones? The Alchemist, the C, was it Ken Livingston, Seagull, uh, something like that. And I think Feel the Fear and Do It Anyway, I think. But, you know, quite a few different ones. And introduction to NLP, and I was kind of just getting interested in this stuff, and just yeah. So I was 
listening to that stuff. But I saw these books on hypnosis and I thought, mm mm. Hmm, wasn't sure. Wasn't sure. Mm, you know, I just wasn't. Didn't know if I wanted to read these books. Didn't know if I wanted to really get involved in hypnosis. Seemed a little bit like witchcraft. A little bit scary, you know. Because I didn't understand it. Didn't know what it was. And... My only experience of hypnosis was watching Paul McKenna on television doing his stage hypnosis show in the early 90s. So I didn't really know. And also... I didn't, I've never really been into party tricks, which is what it seemed like, or like public humiliation, you know, making someone act silly on a stage. It didn't really appeal to me. Yeah, not even, no, not even from a, from a sort of stand-up comedy perspective, I just didn't didn't really see. It wasn't really something that I saw any value in personally. Um, although I used to like to watch it when I was younger, I used to watch those shows, and it's fascinating. But I didn't really, yeah, I didn't. Uh, I was a bit. Uh, but anyway, in January 1998, after looking at these, this book particularly, listen, looking at it, and another one, I think it had a green cover, but looking at it and just thinking, mm, maybe I'll buy it, maybe not. But in the end I did. And I bought it, as I said, in January 98. And... I read it, and it was the f my f it was the first or my first taste of hypnosis, and you know, th in the introduction it says hypnosis is a lot like daydreaming. When you daydream, you alter your state of consciousness to the alpha frequency region and engage in your fantasies and it goes on so I just I thought okay and I read it it's how many pages is there Two hundred and fifty nine pages. These were the days, if you look at it, it says, um, I think the publishers Llewellyn.com, and it says at the back of the book, has a few pages of other books that are available. Visit us online to browse hundreds of our books and decks. X, what's that? So this is under the magic. This is actually this company had yeah, they got books on psychic development. Write your own magic, the healing power of Reiki. Journey of Souls, another one called Beyond Reincarnation. So, hypnosis doesn't really, for me, I don't see how it fits in any of that. 
Um, but other than, I guess, there's some people are into the uh, past life regression, which is not something that I am into at all. I don't remember when I got this there wouldn't probably have been any website so it would have been uh, and it also has here order by mail so it wouldn't have had an order online because in 1998 the internet was in its infancy and this was first published wow first published in 1986 and this is the 15th edition which is 2014 so 1986 1987 1997 by William W. Hewitt all rights reserved it's a fair wow yeah this is quite a quite an old book And it's weird, I kind of wish I still had the original. But the original one might have been in 1997. That my, the, my original one. But I suppose I could have had a 1986 version. I don't know. But either way, it wouldn't have had anything about the internet. at the end and page 258 the summary and just going about how they've examined many hypnosis routines just going sort of what's been in the book so I'm not going to read any of the actual book but I can tell you what's in it Yeah, I just thought I'd just look at it and just uh, tell you about it, really. It might be worth having a read. <sighs> um. <sighs> Last night. Well, yeah, whenever I went to bed. Andre was on the bed already. And so I thought, I'll go to bed with him. But it means I had to keep my socks on. Because he likes eating my toes. So I have to keep my socks on. And he seemed happy enough. And I just, you know, started to drift off. And then I notice a little tongue licking at my ear and he's licking in my ear basically trying to wake me up. And it starts to nibble around my eye. And I turn over to the other side and I'm kind of looking through my eyes because it's dark so I can kind of see his his body kind of moving around and he starts to try and lick the other ear so basically he's trying to wake me up because he's awake he thinks that I should be awake and he wants to play he wants to do something 
doesn't like it when I'm asleep when he's awake. But it's okay for him to be asleep when I'm awake. It's very much one way traffic sometimes. So in the end I had to go and put him into the living room and uh, close the door and take my socks off just stretch out on my bed and it was just really comfortable then because when he's on there during the day if it's just like an afternoon nap it's lovely but when it's actually proper sleep I don't like being disturbed you know I like to just Stretch out, relax, roll over. Well, not roll over. I'm not kind of continuously rolling. I don't live on a hill. But I just, it's nice to just let go. And I like to have me feet free from socks, from the prison of socks. Because even though the socks are, they're not tight. I don't, I don't wear socks. Uh, you know, I'm a size ten foot. I don't wear a size four sock because that would be a bit silly. But still, it's not comfortable for me to be in bed with socks on. I just like the freedom. And the air on my toes and my feet. It just feels so pleasurable. It's just... I don't know, it's almost like the air is gently massaging the bottoms of my feet. Just very, very gently. I'd be massaged by a ghost or poltergeist or something. Just gently, very gently. Or a vampire, I don't know. But it's nice, just nice to just let the air. And that's part of the reason why I quite like the summer. Because at night I can basically get pretty much naked sometimes it's a case of having to because a, there's a, a few nights during the year only two or three where it's just too hot to wear anything and it's just oh, it's lovely to have that coolness at night but still it's a nice temperature. Just feeling that breeze. Because some, it's no weird how sometimes you can have a breeze in a room. And I don't mean the one that a breeze coming out of my body. I'm talking about it's just like a breeze in the room. And the windows are closed. The door's closed. It's not, it's like no reason for there to be a breeze, but... It almost feels like it's a gentle breeze blowing across your face, relaxing you deeply, sort of making you feel tired and wanting to just drift off. It's amazing, it just feels so nice. Yeah, there's no logical reason why it's even there. Unless, of course, you've got a fan. It's just, it's like I can feel it now. I'm just like laying my head back in my big black squeaky chair. I'm not fully reclined, only semi. 
and just even though it's only semi I still feel it's really relaxed and I feel that my head is nice and supported and my neck and my shoulders and my back is just gently there my arms are, and hands are rested on the armrests which is a good name for them I got my eyes closed I'm just breathing I'm actually breathing through my mouth that's partly because I've got my head back and my mouth naturally is open a little bit and the breathing takes no effort It just happens. On its own. And it's just really peaceful. And then I move my legs and the chair squeaks a little bit and when I did get up today or yesterday breakfast had a cup of coffee yeah I didn't drink all of the coffee I probably left about a quarter between a quarter and a third decided to make my way to catch the bus because I wanted to go and pick up my prescriptions and was going to go to the supermarket however I decided to go to the discount store instead and I picked up a few bits that were a lot cheaper there than they would have been in the regular shop and then I also got some beans three tins of beans but they were like the half tins 
just the correct amount for a portion for myself. And then I went and waited for the bus to bring me home. And there was a bit of a wait. It wasn't a long wait. But there's probably about 20 minutes so I walked up to the bus stop and I put my two carrier bags on the floor because there were no shelves there was no fridges or cupboards at the bus stop it would be handy if there was a freezer so that I could put frozen, frozen frozen stuff and frozen stuff in the fridge or the fridge or the freezer rather keeping the frozen items that I had purchased until the correct bus arrived at that bus stop ready to carry me to my destination which was a, another bus stop which is closer to my abode And eventually the bus did arrive. And I put my left hand out so the bus driver could see that I required him to stop the bus so that myself and others could get onto the bus so they could go to their destinations because not everyone was going to the same 
place. Unless, of course, they were. But they decided to get off at a different bus stop for some reason. And I don't know what that reason could be. And I suppose I may never can know such a thing which is to finally get on that bus and sit down relax Focusing really focusing. Just hearing the traffic in the distance. Is rather I can actually feel my brain slowing down.
and even the sounds of Andre eating his dinner. doesn't change how incredibly relaxed how incredibly Sometimes I'll just sit here and watch Andre running around and climbing through his big plastic tunnel which he's doing right now which is okay when I'm not recording feels so calm I literally feel that I'm just drifting So sleepy. And even the the background sound of Andre doing his best to annoy me. Still feels relaxing. I think he's a bit thrown off. I cleaned the carpet today with the carpet cleaning machine I think it's a Vax I think now Andre is having a Nice drink of water. Now he's just dipped his chin in. He 
seems happy. He's now trying to get into the bag of cardboard. Which means is either going to make a bunch of mess or a lot of scratching sounds, and possibly both. It's definitely got his attention. Because he's only just noticed it. He's going to want to break that bag and now he's playing with a little ball, pushing the ball around. He's a happy boy. He's four years old now. But he's still a baby really. Still likes to play. Still likes to get his own way. Still makes to like statues. Make statues out of clay. That nah, just that rhymes. Likes to urinate on hay. No, that's another rhyme. But he has had a good day. seconds from falling asleep
peaceful. It just feels really good. To experience such a high level of relaxation and tiredness. Spreading through out my body and mind. Bring 
this recording to an end before Fall asleep.